you know, I really thought I was done with barracks rooms. What should I do now? Let's ask Smokey the Bear. Smokey the Bear. What should I do now? Well, Smokey says it. <laughs> Good evening, scallywags and landlubbers, airborne and filthy legs, prolifics and pedestrians. Welcome to another exciting episode of Before the Mass, a show where we ill-advisedly imbibe inebriants until we wish we hadn't and then get over the hangover right in time for the next evening's cocktail. I guess that's my role. This is where you learn to be a creative drinker. And hear sea stories and things of artistic import. I am Aaron Burks, a.k.a. Boats, a.k.a. Sarge, a.k.a. Fucker, and I am your host in this debacle that is my life. Tonight's cocktail is the Yellow Hammer Slammer. A drink so simple, all you sailors should have all the ingredients. Soldiers, maybe not, since I know all you assholes drink is Jim Beam and Jack Daniels. But I can say that because I'm a retired soldier. And then I'll tell you exactly what it is I'm up to right now, since I know most of you are thinking, man, Boats sure is casual, or he looks like he smells like the Northwoods. I don't know what the Northwoods smell like, but he sure looks like he smells like them. Or, where is that asshole? Is that, is that a barracks room? Yes, yes it is. I thought I had finished with the barracks 10 years ago, but here I am. Your artistic journey tends to take you in the strangest places, like full circle, back to government quarters with a nature view. For tonight's cocktail, the Yellow Hammer Slammer, you will need vodka, rum, amaretto, orange juice, pineapple juice, an ice-filled shaker, and an ice-filled rocks glass. Let's get started. To the lounge away from lounge. Oh, we're there. Start with three quarters of an ounce of vodka. One ounce of rum. One ounce of Di Sirono. Three ounces of pineapple juice. And one and a half ounces of orange juice. And now, shake it like a crying baby. Strain. Cheers. Yeah, that's pretty good. Still not overly alcoholic tasting, which is surprising seeing as it's got three different liquors in it. But originally this recipe calls for three quarters ounce of each liquor. I bumped up the uh, Di Sirono and the rum because the first time I drank this I thought it tasted a little bland, just like pineapple juice. Now it still tastes like pineapple juice, it's got a little bit of a uh, like a molassesy nutty flavor. Yeah. 
I'm not really sure that the vodka adds anything to it other than octane. All in all, it's not a bad drink. It, uh, it's, it's not very... It doesn't burn your throat. It's, it's very middle of the road for cocktails, I think. Uh, if, if you don't like alcoholic flavored cocktails, this one would be for you. Try it yourself. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Cheers. Now you listen to me. You like and subscribe. Because I need to make that scratch. I'm hoping for a alcohol sponsor. I'm also hoping for a art supply sponsor, but one step at a time. Interesting story today. There I was driving down the Shelter Cove Road, which is long and windy. All of a sudden, I turn this, this switch back, and there's a dog in the middle of the road. Not like a wild dog, but like a dog. A, a like cute little dog. I almost ran it over. Swerved around it. And in my rearview mirror, I see him running after my car. And while he's running after my car, almost gets hit by another car. So I pulled off to the side. And in my side view mirror, saw him almost get hit again. And, you know, normally I'm not into uh, taking in stray animals that I don't know. Um, I learned my lesson with Mistress Holbein, the feline. She's a sweetheart. But I really didn't want to be the witness to see this dog die or the last person that saw it alive. So I opened the door and called it over and it was friendly as hell. It hopped right in, so I knew it wasn't like a hyena or something. I was wondering, because it looked kind of like a hyena. Turned out it was a female. I don't think those things matter these days. Anyways, I decided to name it Freckles. Picture. Now you know why I call it Freckles. Started asking every car that I passed if they knew who this dog was. Nobody knew who it was. And I drove for probably 10 miles. Nobody knew who this dog was. And I thought to myself, my God, what have I done? Because I took this dog away from where I had found it and carted it down the mountain miles and miles and miles. I don't know this area. It could have been like right in its own backyard for all I know. Doubtful though, because it was in the middle of the forest and there were no cross streets. It was, yeah. Um, I got kind of worried. Then I decided I was going to go down to the general store, the only store in the area, and uh, ask them if they knew who the dog was. So I went in with a picture of the dog and was like, hey, have you seen this dog? And to my happy surprise, the lady rolled her eyes and said, yes, that is my neighbor's dog. She is a little escape artist. I was just happy that I was able to reunite this little beast with its person. Because dogs are crazy and they do crazy things, especially puppies. They just go do crazy things. And it's not the owner's fault if they get out. I mean, it just happens. It happens. Yeah, call me an asshole. I've had many dogs in my life. No matter how hard you try, they all get out. Unless you tie them to a tree. And guess what? I'm not that asshole. Anyways, we gave the dog some water. She got reunited with her parents. And I got a happy ending. That's not what I meant, you filthy fuckers. Warm day today. Wrecking all. Go down to the cove. Do some painting.
Yep. Down in the southeastern city of Elat, I fell in love with an Israeli girl. She spoke no English and I spoke no Hebrew, but she was hot so I gave it a whirl. Oh! Hi there! Welcome to another exciting episode of Before the Mast. Today will be a little different because I'm in the middle of nowhere. This place is called the Kaluna Klitz Cabin. Today, we're going to have big fun. So today I'm going to take you all on a tour of Kaluna Cliffs and Shelter Cove. It's going to be a good time, picturesque and beautiful. Let's go. Well, this is the view from the Kaluna Cliffs cabin. Breathtaking. You can hear the ocean from here. Every once in a while you can hear a seal barking. Down there is Shelter Cove. And there's the cabin where I was supposed to stay, but cannot stay because the federal government says, no fun for you, Burks. So here I'll take you up to the actual cliff face, which is kind of like a horseshoe. feet down to the beach. Probably about a hundred feet before you hit the ground the first time. But man, what a beautiful last view. So clearly you need to be as careful as possible because the last thing you want to do is fall down. Oh! Here we are at Black Sands Beach. Black Sands Beach. Legend has it that the sands are black because of a Spanish galleon carrying gunpowder that washed ashore. Just kidding. That is an absolutely false assertion. Good God, man, your bicycle sounds like a goose. Wah, 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 wah. This here is Little Black Sands Beach. It's like Black Sands Beach, only smaller. Amazing. Cruel but beautiful mistress. Now here we are at the Cape Mendocino Lighthouse, which is in Shelter Cove. Used to be at Cape Mendocino, and then they flew it down here and rebuilt it to preserve it. These are the tide pools. Down there, that's Willie the Whale. I'm sure someone back east is saying, why don't you write? 
This is Seal Rock, where all the seals hang out. They're all just out there getting ready for their next mission. Booyah, lads. Booyah. This is Abalone Point. They originally said that I can't come out here and draw because it's too dangerous. And I said, ah, baloney. Behind me is Shelter Cove Airport. This is how the well-off come in. They leave driving up those roads to the plebes. Oddly enough, there is a golf course on the airstrip. Interesting placement. Also, interesting placement for a nature trail. It's really pretty out there, but I don't want to go out there because I don't feel like talking to people. Oh, there's a good view of Kaluna Cliffs where, where we were this morning. This is Wedding Point. Down there is Shelter Cove. Just make out the lighthouse. There's a little fishing boat out there. No idea why they call it Wedding Point. Way out there. Fort Bragg. Not the hellhole Fort Bragg, Army Brethren. That's California Fort Bragg. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? The the Damn if I didn't buff myself up there. Funny thing is, I didn't even cut myself with the bayonet. Cut myself on the stupid stick. Bob Saget, man, I promised Jess that I would not fall off the mountain. Oh, well. Not sure she watches my videos anyway. Can I put my finger in the, in the frame? Up there. <laughs> Trying to hit that little button with the finger is kind of hard. 